Catholics who engage in the kind of commentary that I do frequently talk about a restoration of tradition being in the works in the church, happening from the ground up. The laity, seminarians, and many of the priests are active on this front, and the consequence is that more parishes and more dioceses are making the traditional liturgy and the preconciliar teachings more readily available, which is good. Though this claim is often not really backed up with hard data to prove it. So today I have an example of that from the headlines, and it came to my attention via Pastor Jimmy Martin of the Jesuit Church of all places. Speaking of Jesuits, one of the remaining good Jesuits gave me some good news about that order that I'll provide at the end of this, so stick around for that. Let's get into what is giving Pastor Jimmy Martin such a headache at this time. And if there's anything that he dislikes, it is the restoration of authentic traditional Catholicism in the local parish. He's recently been crying about the restoration of tradition publicly, and if it wasn't for him, I might not have noticed this article, which is a good news piece if there ever was one. This has been reported by the National Catholic Distorter. A piece by someone whose name is Peter, I don't know, Fraulein, I think, tells the story of a North Carolina modernist parish that suddenly got a new parish priest, and he began the hard work of restoring the faith to the parish. This caused numerous members of the laity to leave the parish, and somehow NCR got a hold of the story, probably when one of the parishioners left and told their favorite outlet about it with the hopes that the bishop would listen to them. Now, the funny thing about that is, to their great credit, the U.S. bishops have never really liked the distorter for very obvious reasons. The priest, Father Cod, restored liturgical order by merely reigning in the Novus Ordo, bringing back Latin, incense, clearing out its collection of non-Catholic works, and in general preaching the faith from the altar, including the four last things. I have seen no indications that he, re that he actually restored the traditional Latin mass. Okay, now, if he did, if you know that he did, let me know in the comments, but I couldn't find that anywhere. Apparently, being reminded of our sinful nature does not make some Catholics very happy, and many of them chose to leave the parish and instead meet on Sundays at an auto repair shop owned by someone who doesn't share our faith instead, meaning essentially they've embraced Luther, which I have seen some lady say online that they will do if traditional Catholicism is restored. That sentiment says all that is needed about this issue, to be honest, but this piece by NCR got the attention of everyone's favorite architect of bridges, Pastor Jimmy Martin. And he went on to his favorite place to complain about this, Twitter, and recounted the stories of what happens when traditionally minded priests come into the parishes like this, with parish councils going away, the traditional order of things at the Mass restored, meaning a return of incense, the removal of laity from the altar and ambo, and the real gospel being preached at Mass. Something about all that doesn't make the likes of Pastor Jimmy happy for some reason. After describing all of that in joy-inspiring detail, he then says, quote, Father Matthew Codd was joined by a group of seminarians who went through the church's theology library and removed books deemed heretical, including Henry Newman and Thomas Merton, end quote. He then lamented that they were given the treatment the Vatican recommended from a bygone era when such things in the church were given the treatment that they deserved. Bishop Sticka responded to the architectural author and reminded him that this is exactly what happened to the church after the Second Vatican Council. Traditional parishes were demolished and replaced with new, ugly buildings, Old masses were old mass books were eliminated, and general ugliness that drove people away was embraced. He's not wrong about that either. Every statistic shows a decline in all things Catholic in the years after the Council, and an increase in all the things of the world by those who remain. With the only era area of constant growth year after year is the position of the permanent diaconate, which did not exist in the Church in the years prior to the Council anyway. Aside from that, every relevant statistical measure showed consistent decline in the Church since the 1960s. But you knew that already. Michael Hitchborn's outfit reported on Martin's take on this, and it's pretty funny. All these stories are linked in my show notes today at returntotradition.org to preserve for all time. Again, that's at my website, which has the same name of this channel, but with a .org at the end. And when you get that Patreon pop-up, you can easily skip past that. There's no paywall to view my sources. I can't post the links here to keep in accordance with the rules of this place, so go check it out there. Anyway, the piece in question is by John Shaw, who describes how younger, more traditional clergy are making Pastor Jimmy unhappy. Oh no, I'm sure he'll be fine. But Mr. Shaw describes aptly the underlying logic of Pastor Jimmy and those of the parish in North Carolina. Quote, 
it appears that even the mass reformed by the Second Vatican Council is wholly to be rejected, according to NCR journalist Peter Fuhrerd Fraulein, I don't know. If its celebration includes elements that a certain group of Catholics don't like, Latin, incense, traditional hymns, and preaching that takes its inspiration from Pope John Paul II. That pope started his reign just over a decade after Vatican II ended, but those influenced by him, according to Fuhrerd Fraulein, I don't know, and the people, he quotes in the article, are essentially rejecting the council, a charge made explicit by Father Martin. There is something redolent of a past era about this whole way of addressing issues in the church. The game of who is really loyal to Vatican II, or its spirit, lost its importance, surely, at the latest, with the selection of Pope Benedict XVI, and as the article notes, younger priests and younger Catholics in general don't have a, quote, lived experience of the council anymore. Indeed not. You can't stop the years turning, and they were born long after it. What's the solution? Apparently never to ordain anyone after 19, born after 1960. End quote. Yes, John Paul II is too traditional for some now, which is pretty funny for a number of reasons, including for the fact that most trads don't really care for John Paul II all that much, to put it mildly. If anything, this shows the divide in the church between modernism and the traditionally minded. Has the schism that many of us have been quietly predicting been functionally happening for years already? Who knows? But if it hasn't, then this parish is a glimpse into the future, because in the struggle to restore consistency and tradition to the church, the ape of the church and the church cannot reside in the same structure simultaneously. That is a fact, and as soon as we understand that, the sooner we'll be able to be ready for whatever outcome happens. As for Father Cod, given the state of things, I almost bet the priest gets reprimanded by the bishops. It wouldn't really surprise me if that happens. Remember, they don't particularly like the distorter much, but Pastor Jimmy's got a lot of pull in the church in America. And we've seen this happen numerous times. In fact, I have an example of this to show you. Father Z, the famous Catholic blogger and advocate and sometimes contributor to EWTN, has been told he will leave the Diocese of Madison, Wisconsin. He conducted an exorcism via live stream over the recent happenings in the City of Man, which I will admit can be seen by some as a bit over the top. I'm sure he had his reasons, and frankly, Father Z has been so solid on virtually everything else that I'll even defer to his wisdom on this score. Maybe it was needed. A local newspaper reported on his departure in the following way, quote, the Diocese of Madison said it and the Reverend John Zulsdorf reached a mutual decision on his departure. Zulsdorf will relocate from the diocese, quote, to pursue other opportunities, unquote, the diocese said in a statement earlier this year. The same outfits that shared Father Z's treatment are now also advocating that EWTN give the boot to the last really decent figure there, Raymond Arroyo, because he doesn't tell the Francis line on the role of the church in the world, to put it mildly. But to end on a good note, one of the good remaining Jesuits confirmed for me privately something that I had heard but hadn't been able to verify, that the Jesuit hierarchy are more than a little concerned because their seminarians are displaying troubling signs of rigidity and pharisaical attitudes, meaning that they're showing signs of being much more traditionally oriented. They're so concerned that they've even tried rooting some of these men out of seminary but have had no success in their endeavor. So sad. This means that with your vigilant prayer, the Jesuits might, just might, be restored to their former glory. God willing. If you encounter one of these Jesuits, make sure you let the young man know that he and his brothers are in your prayers, and offer them whatever support you're able to. They need all the help they can get. That good news may sound a little weak, but trust me, I'll take all the good news I can get these days. So what do you think of all this? Let me know your thoughts in the comments, please. And remember, to keep all priests, but especially those doing this good work in your prayers, they need it. Thanks for listening. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.